Welcome back to my RC comp crawling mini series. Today we're looking at the performance scale vehicle as part of the WRCCA rule set. It's a big stack of papers that tends to trip up a lot of newcomers to the hobby, particularly when they're trying to build a vehicle. Performance scale is one of the two classes I think that actually have a bit more to look at than the other competition classes. It's a more recently developed class uh, and accordingly we've actually got quite a bit more to look at in the rules. Performance scale in particular has a general section and then it's got wheels and tires, drivetrain and chassis. So performance scale, also known as C2, is designed for vehicles that have been modified for trail rated or competition based performance. These vehicles may not necessarily be street legal in their full size form. So the idea is you started with a real car, perhaps such as something like this, and cut it down, weld it away, and develop something that you can take on a trailer to the trailhead and off you go. So to make sure that your C2 vehicle or your uh, P scale or performance scale vehicle meets the specs, here's what you've got to be aware of. Your vehicle should have a full body from the grill to the B pillar with no cuts or modifications to the grill. However, you can trim wheel arches, which you can see I've done here. This previously went down and you can also trim headlights so in this case, I've got a grill or a faux grill here. It would be legal for me to trim to get more clearance. And on this machine, which I'm actually still building right now, for me to have the clearance I want with this body, I would want to cut some of that front away. And that is quite okay. For all these rules, if it doesn't explicitly disallow you from doing it, or if the other rules don't stop you from doing it, then you can do it. In this case, can't cut the grill, can cut the edges, can trim the wheel arches, all okay. If your vehicle has a cab only configuration, which this example does, cab only, it needs to have a frame, bar work or tray, which is what we've got here. This is the old C10 Chevy Ascender body. You're allowed to remove the roof as long as a roll cage or half interior is fitted. The body, including any tray, cage or bar work should be at least three inches longer than the wheelbase. Wheelbase on this fella is just over 12 inches. And so we need to be at least 15 inches long. And this body is 17 and a half inches. So that is legal. The body should be at least five inches wide for the full length of the passenger cabin. No worries here with what, seven-ish, give or take. You're allowed to section or narrow the body from the A pillar forward or the B pillar back, but the cage itself, sorry, but the uh, cabin itself needs to be kept at its original size. The inner side wall or the shoulder of the front tires measured at the axle center should be covered by bodywork when viewed from above at rest. And so, as you can see, we've got the inner tire wall covered when this is actually on, because I haven't actually finished mounting this yet. Uh, it is covered at rest. Now you need a front bumper that's at least 2.75 inches wide, which we're safe here with our four inch wide bumper. And they've got a helpful picture on one of the pages of the, of the comp document that shows you some examples of what's legal and what's not legal as far as uh, the front profile goes. Basically, as long as the bumper covers your two front chassis rails, you're generally fine. Chassis mounted bumpers need to project at least three mils past the body, which this one definitely does, because three mils really isn't very much at all. And body molded front bumpers can't deflect inward. So if I was to remove this and just have the original chrome bumper that came on this, it's not allowed to be able to bend in because that gives an advantage. Your bumper needs to be fairly solid. Some flex is okay, but it's not allowed to be able to deflect like uh, polycarbonate. Clear or Swiss cheese bodies are not allowed. That is to cut a bunch of holes to, you know, give homers speed holes just to save some weight and increase your uh, performance with a lower center of gravity. Consider realism, they say. No electrics other than a steering servo are allowed to be mounted or fixed to axles or suspension links. So you can have axle mounted servo, but that's all you can have. No, no other electronics can be mounted. So you can't park your receiver on there to save some weight as well. And lastly, receivers are limited to Two channels only, that's throttle and steering. I thought to have diff lock in the rear of mine, but I realized that that last rule stops me from being able to do that. And I talk more in depth about that in this video here. Let's talk about tires and wheels. Your vehicles must have wheels and rims no larger than 2.2 inches at the bead surface. I'm running 1.9s here. Whether or not you have 1.9s or 2.2s, your tires must be no bigger than 4.8 inches. These are 4.75 inches and I've got an example of what 4.8 inches looks like right here. That's the biggest size you're allowed to have. These are the G-Made MT1904s, and I've tested these thoroughly in my tire test series. These are really good tires, for, especially for an OEM, but that's the biggest size allowed in this class. Tire size is what's listed by the manufacturer. That's how we determine it. 
And if the specs aren't available, the tire is placed on its side like that and measured at rest uh, without being compressed. So no tricks here. It needs to be 4.8 maximum diameter. You're allowed to uh, sipe, groove, shave, or remove lugs from the tire. And removing lugs from the tire looks like this. So there's a tire with lugs removed, tire without lugs removed, same tire. So that's legal for uh, performance scale. So that kind of cutting is allowed, but you can't cut or narrow or reduce the tire. So cut and uh, glue it up again. So you can't do what we've done for the mini here, which is where you cut up and make your own tire from pieces. Oh, and lastly, production pin tires are not allowed, even if they meet the size rules. So let's just say you could actually get production pin tires in 1.9, they're not allowed in uh, performance scale, even if they meet all the other specifications, because pins are kind of like cheat mode on some of these crawlers. Now let's move on to the drivetrain. Vehicles are limited to front wheel steering only and must be shaft driven only. So here's front wheel steering only. And we have drive shafts for this fella. That's how we're turning our axles front and rear. No motor on axle of any kind is allowed and you must have one transmission or transfer case and at least two drive shafts. There's no separate throttle control of the drive shafts or axles and there's no front or rear dig or any kind of axle disconnect. That includes uh, remote lockers unless they're full-time unlocked. Your vehicles can have a C-channel, a tub, which is like your uh, Tamiya style, uh, tube, rod, molded plastic or plate chassis, which is what you'd kind of count the carbon fiber flat plates. Shock hoops must be no higher than 2.75 inches or 70 mil above the lowest point of the skid. The upper link mounts on the chassis must be no more than 1.18 inches or 30 mil higher than the lowest points of the skid. The chassis must cover all axle center lines. So it needs to go past the axle center lines. The wheelbase must fit the dimensions of the body being used. This one does, but only just. It's actually, it's, it's about right. I really need to mount the body kind of like that. And I'm thinking I might have to cut the back of this off, for example. I'd say I'd be legal like this, but only just. We're kind of starting to uh, stretch the friendship. You couldn't get away with uh, mounting it far back or really far forward. It's, it's got to look roughly realistic to the body. I think you'll find most clubs will be uh, reasonable on that. So I'd probably be okay with this, but I wouldn't go any further than that because this is kind of getting into iffy territory. Cut it up a little bit if you need to, move it forward if you need to. Just make sure that the wheelbase fits the body and you're good to go. If you're using a cage or tray, what's a wheelbase that fits the vehicle? It's got to be between double this and double that. So this is four and a half inches and this is eight inches. So it's got to be between nine and 16 inches. That's how you define the wheelbase for this body. And the wheelbase for this body is 12 inches and that's between nine and 16 inches. So we're good to go, comfortably so. The battery trays must be mounted to the chassis and the section of the chassis that counts as one continuous length must have the skid plate attached to it directly, which we have in this case. There's your skid in the middle here and it's one full piece in this case. That's performance scale. It was a bit of a hefty one to get through. If you'd like to know more about the other classes in the WRCCA rule set or the couple of the other classes that we've adopted for Melbourne Comp Crawlers, you can find them in the description. I'm doing a little video for each of these so that we can do an introduction for each class type. Throw me a like if this was useful and I will catch you in the next video, which will be Tough Truck. Let's do that.